You're listening to the SSPX podcast, and we're interrupting the normal flow of episodes in the Crisis in the Church series for this special interview. Please enjoy. We spoke with Father Thomas Anoda earlier in the spring, just after the Society of St. Pius X officially opened its first priory in Japan, after having served it for many years from other locations like Singapore. The Stella Matutina Priory, overseen by Father Anoda, is a sign that slowly but surely, tradition is taking root in Japan. We spoke with Father for just over 30 minutes or so about his story, the sometimes violent history of Catholicism in Japan, and what he sees for the future of his country. He asked me just before the interview if he could say a few words about the special history of Nagasaki for Catholics in Japan. As an American, I wasn't going to bring up this horrific bombing of Japan during World War II during this interview. I didn't know what the proper boundaries are in this case, but I am so glad he wanted to bring it up. When you hear it, I think you'll agree that it led to one of the most inspiring moments throughout all our episodes on this entire podcast. With that said, let's join Father Anoda here on the SSPX Podcast. Welcome to the SSPX podcast, and we are uh, privileged to have a special guest join us today, and that is Father Thomas Anoda. Hello, Father. How are you? Hello. Fine. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me oh, to join. Oh, no, very good. It's uh, it's our privilege to have you, and uh, and we've heard so much about uh, the mission of the Society of Saint Pius the Tenth in Japan, and and the work that is going on, uh, and we wanted to have you on and talk just a little bit because, well, first. It's interesting, and, and also uh, there's a new priory uh, that was just just started, just founded in uh, in Tokyo, um, and so. But first, we wanted to ask: Could you tell some of our listeners a little bit about you and and uh, who you are and how you became a priest father? Well, uh, I, I I was born in Japan. Uh, with my Japanese parents, and I grown up and educated uh, totally in in Japan uh, as common Japanese until, by grace of God, I was baptized at the age of sixteen, and uh, it was Christmas Day of wow. nineteen eighty, and uh, so I started practice faith. Uh, well, uh, say rosary, attend a mass, but though it was new mass, I, I, I. Somehow our parish priest was very conservative and uh, he insisted the devotion to the Holy Eucharist and the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, uh, and then I went, when I uh, entered, uh, well, I studied university, I discovered traditional mass and also uh, I, I realized that the traditional was conservative Catholics are persecuted. And, I, and the, the good Catholics are looking for good priests who honor the Blessed Sacrament, love Our Lady, and have devotions to, to all the, the church past. And uh, well, I, it, I discovered it was very rare. Uh, well, uh, I consulted my parish priest who uh, encouraged me to enter a seminary in uh, Archbishop's first, the site is Sebastian. So uh, after my university, I entered the seminary at Flavin in 1987. And so I engaged myself to the site is in February 2nd, 1988, and ordained priest by His Excellency, by Bishop. Uh, Alfonso de Guarreta in Econ, 1993. Wow. So you, you were at the seminary and, at the uh, same time that, that yes. the Archbishop was there, at least for, for a short time. If... Yes, yes, yes. Well, Archbishop, uh, His Excellency was, uh, uh, His Grace was in Econ, and however, oh, okay. I, I was in Flavini, but he came, visited occasionally, and then he, well, uh, I, our, our batch was torn short and uh, received uh, cassock. And so when you were ordained then, uh, were you sent immediately back to Asia or did you spend time in other places? I was immediately uh, sent back to Asia, okay. but to the Philippines. And I spent uh, 27, 28 years of uh, my priestly life uh, uh, missionary wow. in the Philippines, but 
together with the mission uh, to Japan, Korea, and other That's countries. That's wonderful. And now we are here today, and there's uh, finally, probably in your eyes, finally, a, uh, a priory in, in the area of Tokyo. Uh, and that was just uh, this past January. Yes. Yes, right. Uh, officially, it opened of, uh, January 13th, commemoration of the baptism of Lord Jesus Christ, uh, with, with two priests, uh, Father Domone and Wonderful. myself. Wonderful. Uh, now, under the yes, under the guidance of the under that uh, well, the, how are we named uh, with the help of with the permission of uh, the Samas, our spirit of District of Asia, uh, Stella Matutina, the Morning Star, uh, to to indicate this that our ladies, this is our ladies' house, and she would uh, uh, somehow announce the rising sun, Jesus Christ, to over our That's beautiful. Nation, Japan. Well, you mentioned. Uh... Immaculate Heart overseeing uh, Japan. Could could we take a step back a little bit, Father? And uh, could you tell us ab about the history of Catholicism in Japan? Is is there a a deep history of of Catholicism there in Japan? Yes, uh, the history of Catholicism in Japan starts with Saint Francis Xavier, who came the, as first missionary in 1549 and uh, uh, when upon his arrival the mission was successful i uh, 100 years it's called the catholic uh, century of japan and uh, however there was a terrible persecution and long persecution uh, started uh, uh, nine, uh, 1597 with uh, 26 uh, martyrs, the first martyrs. And uh, the persecution uh, was, uh, uh, was stronger, became stronger and stronger. And uh, it lasted for 250 years with, with many devices to, to detect and prosecute and uh, execute Catholics. And in spite of all these seven generations without priests, the Catholic faith survived. And uh, when uh, Father uh, Puchijong uh, came to the land of Japan, uh, uh, he discovered the, the crypto Christians who was uh, the descendant of the, the Catholics who were catechized and baptized by the, the disciples of St. Francesia. Wow. That is beautiful. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, also the, the first attempt to enter the missionary was the priest of the uh, foreign missionaries of Paris, a French priest, Father Foucault. He, was, he, he arrived... Well, he wanted to enter Japan, but in vain. So the first thing he did is to consecrate Japan to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And that uh, triggered the opening of the ports and uh, allowing the faith into Japan. Wow. That's another beautiful story. I yes, it is. And, and today, uh, Catholicism is not that, it, it's not a large uh, percentage of the population. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I think because of long history and the prejudice, uh, well, 400 years ago, uh, it was flourishing, but now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's time, uh, it's, we are suffering of the, the long history and uh, we have only 400,000 baptized or registered Catholics in 16 dioceses, all Japan. So this, but this presents only 0.3% of the total Japanese population. But that just means that there's room for growth, right, Father? Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, we are very happy for this perspective that we have lots of work to do and by, we have lots of uh, grace to ask. Yes. Uh, and we have lots of fruits to, to collect. Absolutely. 
Uh, in terms of uh, the traditional Catholic movement, uh, is there is there any uh, growth there? Uh, obviously, there is a there's enough now for there to be a priory in Tokyo. Um, but is there other other places in 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 Japan where there is a, a movement of traditional Catholics? Yes, traditional Catholics spread all over Japan. Uh, we have mainly two uh, regular missions: one in Tokyo and the other is in Osaka. And all in all, about one hundred twenty faithful uh, who okay. would come to attend the mass on Sundays with a variety of nationalities, but we have people in Sapporo, Hokkaido, or in uh, Aomori, or, uh, or Iwate, or, or Kyushu, or other places. And uh, so uh, Nagoya also. And uh, if we, uh, well, we have enough manpower with enough priests, we would love to help them to reach out for those people who want to come but cannot come very uh, often, but only once a year or like this, very limited. Sure. And, and now that you have, and, uh, a, now that you have uh, a priory there, uh, uh, what, are, what are your plans? Uh, do you have plans to try to... Um, Build more mission chapels, or to try to spread the message more. What What are your ideas or, or plans for the for the SSPX in Japan, Father? Well, uh, our, our plan well is that first of all, Our Lady or Immaculate Heart of Mary would be our really guide and our uh, prioress to to guide our uh, mission. And we really wanted to uh, well, do her desire and uh, do work as her instrument, as her uh, uh, colleague and uh, or uh, instrument. And uh, so, uh, first, I I think we want to show that we are really doing, continuing what Holy Catholic Church used to do and must do. Um, uh, uh, that we, what we are doing is really the continuation of the Saint Francesia, or the continuation of the faith of the martyrs and all our uh, predecessors, or the holy priests and bishops, and just continue under the guidance of Immaculate Mary. So first, I think it's very important to emphasize our faith and spiritual life, and uh, I think it is echoes our uh, spirit general father Parelani's uh, uh, idea that uh, we are called for this holy life to, to Catholic, live the Catholic faith. So um, in this occasion, under the guidance of Immaculate Tato Mary, uh, I'd like to well, uh, somehow uh, Commemorate, well, the emphasize, the, uh, the highlight, the to celebrate 150th anniversary of the proclamation proclamation of the Saint Joseph as universal patron of the Holy Catholic Church, and we want to renew the consecration of the SSPX and, and especially our Japan mission to Saint Joseph, March 19th, and you know Saint Joseph was really protector of the Holy Family. He brought Chai Jesus to Egypt together with Our Lady. And I, we hope that, I hope that the Saint Joseph will bring Chai Jesus together with Our Lady to Japan as a missionary. And he will help us to, 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 to protect the life, a spiritual life of Jesus Christ in Japan. And also, I, I think, as a filial gratitude this year, I want to commemorate and uh, magnify the, the, the spirituality of the founder, our founder, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, uh, who passed away March 25th, and this is the 30th death anniversary. And uh, well, by grace of God, with the help of the people, with enough funds, we want to publish the Japanese translation of the biography of Archbishop, written by His Excellency Tissi Ramadere. 
uh, we, we are working on it. And also uh, in, in spirituality uh, line, uh, the, we, we have the first Holy Week in Tokyo ever, including the Easter Vigil. Uh, so it is a great event for the people in Tokyo. Uh, we want to make beautiful tenebre, the tree doom, and the uh, Easter ceremonies, and uh, the, oh, uh, uh, all the ceremonies. And uh, with a good preparation, the beautiful ceremony, in spite of our uh, um, uh, rented uh, just uh, ad hoc chapel. And uh, so also this year, I want to, 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 to give our love, our mission to the most sacred of Jesus because he loves us so much. He, he, he suffered, he gave his life, he, he gave his blood, his everything for us, for, to lead us to heaven. And uh, well, at, at the proof, at the, at the exhibition of such uh, tremendous love, I think we, uh, I think we, we want to return our love to Sacred Heart, and on in this line, uh, we want to prepare ourselves uh, faithful to love Sacred Heart Jesus and give our our little uh, thing to to Him, the Sacred Heart. And then by this, well, well, if we do and continue our, what we must do as Catholic, good Catholic, I think the rest will be given to us. And so we, we, we wish that we have a permanent church eventually in Tokyo. Well, oh, there's, uh, there's plenty to do. Uh, and it, and it's and it's beautiful, Father, to hear that uh, it's not just about building churches or starting new things. It's uh, you you want to um, kind of promote the the faith, the spirituality first. That's that's the first thing, and the other things, like you said, will will follow. And and that's that's good to hear, Father. Um, could we speak a little bit about? Uh, do you? Do you stay now mostly in Japan, Father, uh, now that you have a, a home base? Um, or do you travel to other places? Do you visit uh, other mission chapels in various countries? Well, uh, well, uh, by grace of God, well, I have been always traveling to missions to a variety of places and uh, countries. But now I stay only in Japan and just move inside Japan. And, uh, but, uh, well, because it is because of uh, COVID-19, and if the restrictions go out, well, we hope to, to help, continue to help, especially our brothers and sisters in, in Korea, uh, because Japan is normally in charge of Mission Korea and eventually other nations. Uh. Uh, Father, could we speak to you a little bit about about yourself uh, and and what is it about the the vocation that the last uh, two decades that you've had of being a priest? Um, what is what are some of the greatest joys that you have had either in uh, in providing or just simply being a priest? Well, the, my my greatest joy is that we I that I can say I can I have the privilege to offer holy sacrifices of mass according to the, the ancient venerable Roman rite, and this is a really really a wonderful privilege that I appreciate and I thank God and I thank Our Lady I thank Archbishop for for for, for this privilege. The, I feel really this is the most important uh, joy and the most uh, deepest uh, joy. I mean, in, 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 I'm very uh, in deep gratitude of Sacred Heart for this privilege. But also, if I have, 
I can uh, I am allowed to mention maybe I will have privilege to meet so many good people, so many holy souls in whole world in many countries, even far up from the cities or in impossible places and even in maybe that I never expected like uh, in communist countries whatsoever but there are very holy good Catholic souls who are li really looking for mass our Lord Jesus Christ and, and in love so I, I, these discoveries are really my greatest joy and uh, really thankful for this for this education of my soul and uh, the, the, the really admire the grace of God working everywhere wow uh, yeah, the, you, you must have a thousand stories, Father, uh, it's, and that's that's beautiful. Um, on on the opposite side of that, could you speak to some of the some of the challenges, some of the struggles that that you have faced or that you are currently facing in your apostolate right now? Well, uh, well, I think everything is hands of God, and everything God's control, and uh, well. Well, but in spite of all, I realize the, the lack of capacity, lack of uh, manpower, that we see that we need to do this, the, the render service. We want to help such a, such a soul the, for the education of the, the children or was help this and that. But, well, the very limited resources we it cannot extend. That's a heartbreaking, and it's uh, it's a challenge. We we how I how we wish that we help all these people in the struggle and uh, to, to to bring them to to Jesus Christ. But sometimes it it's challenge. It's limited. I'm, we are limited. We can't do it easily. So this is most. Uh, I for me it's uh, uh, a pain. And challenge. Also, uh, another thing is that there are prejudices and misunderstanding about the Catholic tradition. And in spite of all our goodwill, our our the, the, the truth of history, and so evident, but somehow it's twisted and not well understood. And uh, the people speak somehow wrongly so that's also another uh, challenge well how well that we need to pray and uh, ask our lord's uh, grace also uh, in japan we have many uh, a variety of nationalities who who, who do uh, n that who need our help but Sometimes a priest need to speak languages for them. Uh, uh, sometimes people don't understand Japanese or they have to hear confessions in or Portuguese or Spanish or, or, or Chinese. Wow. Or, and so on. So I, I think how I wish that we, I can communicate with them with their uh, languages. But, but we need more priests who had the command of these languages too. Wow, uh, that's that's fascinating, Father. Uh, and and one other thing that uh, we had we had discussed um, talking about here today, and and that is um, the the history of the the city of Nagasaki. Uh, most most Americans, most Westerners, when they think of Nagasaki, think of uh, the horrors of of the atomic bomb. But there's a there's a totally different history with with Nagasaki. When it comes to Catholicism in Japan, yes, it's true. Uh, Nagasaki is a really, really tiny, uh, uh, tiny village before, but it started by a, a by a, a donation by a Catholic lord who donated part of Nagasaki to Jesuit. Mm. Uh, so Nagasaki starts from the very beginning of history. Nagasaki started as a Catholic mission. Center from the very beginning until now, the Nagasaki is 
impregnated with the history and blood of the faith and the martyrs. There is one place, it's called uh, Nishizaka, where the first 26 martyrs of Japan blood they shed for the, as a witness, as a premise, the first fruit of the faith of Japan. Well, in this spot, little tiny place, more than 600 martyred. And I was told that it's a very unique place to, to in just one place, so many people uh, well, were tortured and uh, offered their lives as martyrs. And also in, in, in the, the several uh, villages of small tiny villages of in Nagasaki, for instance, there is a uh, Shitsu uh, in small village where the French missionary worked. Uh, now eight hundred faithful only, but there is a uh, uh, in from this little village there uh, blessed. Uh, Julian Nakaura was born, uh, or the two cardinals of Japan, or one bishop was was uh, produced, uh, or Urakami, the, the, the famous uh, cathedral uh, in, where the, the bomb, atomic bomb, exploded, and so many vocations. From that uh, 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 parish, six bishops and 88 priests who came and uh, other uh, religious brothers and uh, sisters and hundreds. Also, uh, well, well, I was told that uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki is completely different uh, characteristic, uh, character, as characteristics. Uh, thanks to Catholic faith, Nagasaki became somehow really the offering of the prayers and uh, uh, atonement of the sins of the world. And uh, after the atomic bomb at the uh, uh, common funeral of the victim, the, the, as a uh, president of the, uh, the, the Faithful Association, uh, Dr. Paul Nagai, very famous man, thank God for having chosen Nagasaki as a victim that we are, that they, he encouraged uh, people, Nagasaki, the faithful, to offer their sufferings, their lost uh, for God uh, as thanksgiving because of the, God wanted uh, innocent souls to be offered to stop the war and uh, they did it. Also, Nagasaki is, is a place where the St. Maxim Kolbe also came and uh, spread the, the devotion to the Immaculata. And, uh, well, there are so many other things, but, uh, well, I, 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 I feel it's a pride of Japan, one of the most important elements of it, entire Japan. Wow. Well, it's, it's definitely something to be proud of. Father, uh, and uh, that that story of uh, Doctor Nagai saying, you know, we're we're happy that this happened. We we are offering this for for the war to be over, for the sins of of everyone. Um, even even the best Catholics often would not have that reaction that he did. Uh, it is it is edifying to to hear. Wow. <laughs> Well, Father, it is it has been a joy to to speak with you. Um, before I let you go, I, I know you have plenty to do. Um, if the faithful want to help and want to learn more about uh, the work that you're doing, um, is there somewhere they can go to find out more information or to uh, maybe donate if they were able to? Well, if if they help us. Uh, we are very, very grateful. Well, especially I like you to pray for our mission. The prayers, your sacrifices are most appreciated, and we need your really uh, uh, ardent prayers for us to support because we only grace can touch and convert people. 
and uh, especially prayer uh, through the intercession of Our Lady Immaculate Heart of Mary. And, but if you would like to help us materially, you are, uh, you are most uh, uh, welcome and uh, we are very, very grateful. We are in deep gratitude because we also need some ammunition to, to reach out to souls. Uh, and uh, well, uh, for the details, uh, uh, I think the best is that to, 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 to approach your priest in the United States or whatever else, whatever else, and then that you tell the priest that you want to, to give or donate this to the mission in Japan. And I think priest will be very happy to help us. Yes. And, and we will, so we will also provide some information here God bless you. Uh, too, so that people can, can help uh, as much as they can. Uh, there's everyone needs help right now, but um, if someone is in, inspired by some of these stories and by the work uh, that our priests are doing, then maybe they can help a little bit, Father. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time, and and more importantly, Father, thank you for all the work that you've done over the last two decades uh, in in helping to keep the faith alive in in your home country. It's um, a beautiful story, and, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you for listening to and watching the SSPX podcast. The Crisis in the Church series is wrapping up shortly. We have two more episodes before we embark on new interviews and new series that will be coming very soon. In the meantime, if you like what you have been seeing and hearing, please consider a small donation to help support this work. It is free for you to listen to, to view, and to share, but you can imagine the resources this takes. Please visit sspxpodcast.com, click on the support link, and consider a small monthly donation of five or ten or twenty dollars if you can. If you're not able to support this apostolate monetarily, you can help still by sharing these episodes with friends and family members and by rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And of course, the best thing to do is to help with your prayers. This project would be nothing without the priests who take their time to share their experiences and knowledge with us. So please pray for your priests. We'll see you next time with Father Wiseman here on the SSPX Podcast.